a new billion record uh, credential dump uh, shows us that there's really only 20 million passwords out there. Hey Stan, so you've got a story for us today about a new dump of credentials. Yes. So you guys might be familiar with HaveIBeenPwned.com. It's a website that's run by security researcher Troy Hunt. And uh, it's just a website that goes out there and he collects different, um, I guess, breaches and compromises of credentials. So it'll be like a username and password pairing of some sort. And then he just has a database that anybody can come in and search and figure out if their email appears in any one of the, or their name or something, appears in any one of these breaches. Um, so while on that website, I was researching something and a new data source popped up that I wasn't familiar with. It was called collection number one. And uh, there's a little link. You can click on it and find out a little bit more about it. And here's what I found out. So this is very recent. So I guess sometime in January, uh, Troy became aware, uh, actually of this year, so Troy became aware that there was something circulating on the underground uh, dark web uh, of, about like millions of records uh, being, uh, I guess, exchanged uh, that are new records that have never been uh, uploaded before. Right. So uh, what he did is he downloaded it and analyzed it. And so we have um, uh, some statistics from this dump. So he had access to over, I think, 12,000 files, which represented like 87 gigs of this compromised records. Uh, when he then analyzed it and just looked at the email addresses versus the passwords, this is interesting too. Compa look, pay attention to the numbers. So 773 million uh, emails and only 21 million passwords <laughs> when you unique them. So if you do the division, I think I got this right, it's about like 35 uh, I guess users per password if you divide it. Yeah. So th that just shows how much password reuse there is out there, you know, based on how many accounts there are versus how many passwords, which is quite interesting by itself. And this is something interesting. Uh, Troy did mention there's also collections two through five, uh, which have not been loaded into the database yet or analyzed uh, that he has. So uh, I guess more to come on this. Wow. Uh, but it should not be surprising. Wherever he got this from, somebody actually took the time to actually crack all the passwords before they dumped them, right? Yes. So, I mean, that's, that's not a cheap, that's an expensive, you know, sort of uh, process, right? So somebody went through the, the trouble of taking these, you know, what, hundreds of millions of passwords and and actually cracking those passwords before dumping this stuff. I wonder, I just wonder how long that actually takes and what is that, you know? Yeah, I suspect a lot of the passwords are probably gonna be very short or yeah, simple, yeah. or probably some kind of combination of like a simple word and a number. And there's so many different permutations, but they're all so similar. When you have a huge dump like this, you're getting a pretty good sampling of what the world uses as passwords. You get those top you know, 20 to 25, top 20, 50 most reused passwords, and I'm assuming these dumps like this are used to start making those calculations about, yes. you know, is, is monkey still the f number one used password, or has it been surpassed by some other simple, you know, ABC123 kind of password, but. Actually, the great thing about this website, which is one thing I didn't know, is he has an API. You can go and you can write an application on top of the data he has. And you can actually query it. For example, one implementation might be before your users start using a password. You know, I, you've probably seen some websites where they tell you the complexity of your password and yes. they give you like a little red, yellow, green. Uh, with this, you can actually pass the hash to the site and see has uh, the password been cracked before? Maybe don't let the user choose that password, or uh, at least warn them that that's not a great password to use. Right. Maybe get like a, what's redder than red? I don't know. <laughs> Some other color right. that lets you know, hey, absolutely do not use this password. But what's interesting about this now is that there's been an amount of password data disclosed that even if you're using different accounts, that you can actually look at this from the different, uh, the, the other side of the perspective, 
and look at especially unique passwords and associate the various accounts with password reuse that can be tracked back to a specific individual. Um, so there actually, there's so much of this type of data um, that's out there now that they're able to start doing some really interesting analysis on that beyond just, you know, what passwords are most frequent, but also taking someone who might have some favorite passwords that they feel are sufficiently complex that they reuse those passwords on different accounts and then using the password commonality to actually link the accounts to a, to a single individual. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I mean, because we've seen that in the past where, you know, folks like to come up with maybe a scheme for creating those passwords. So if, if this database shows you perhaps one or two iterations of a single person's password, you can come up with the scheme so that even if they change their password, you've got the next scheme that they're going to change into, right? That's interesting. That's a good thought. <laughs> yeah. Light bulb. <laughs> I think with credential loss stories in general, we, we have to make sure uh, that we remember to always be changing our passwords on a, a constant basis, maybe once a month, once every two months, whatever is more convenient for you. And really do try to keep your passwords uh, different between websites. Make sure that you use complicated passwords. Um, and if, if you don't think that you can create complicated passwords on your own, there are plenty of programs that are available today, uh, password managers, that will do it for you. And they'll manage the entire process for you, you know, storing the passwords in a safe way and then creating complicated passwords that you don't even have to remember yourself and just let the manager do it for you, I think is probably one of the easiest ways for folks to really become much more secure about their passwords.